Hello Divine One, the topic of this video has such uh, attraction because, but it is not that I have made such topic to attract you here. It, it, is, it is a fact because people used to call Jesus the prophet of prostitute. Nobody repeat this term in modern time, but it is how it is written in the scripture. And we know that Jesus was uh, doing work with not very highly reputed people of the society, although Nicodemus is, was a kind of a priest and who came to Jesus. But there are very few people such, but most of the people were ordinary people. And of them two people or, or lady who is called fallen, according to the people's standard that time, but uh, Jesus, they, Jesus found some potential, some spark in those ladies compared to other ladies. Although we have the, the birth of Jesus Christ through the virgin, the, 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 cast, uh, the complete perfection of, of the purity. So, but the, in the life of Jesus Christ, we find so many women who were not so reputed with uh, reputes, reputation in the society, not good reputation because even even the lady who was married to five men, and uh, presently she's she's living with she was living with a person with whom she was not yet married, and such relationship failure. And Jesus was there, and she was also not reputed woman. There was a woman whom people were throwing a stone for adultery and. And Jesus, we find Jesus doing great work there. And also a woman who came, a fallen woman, who came to kiss Jesus. Uh, she was kissing Jesus. Uh, kissing, uh, uh, even if she was kissing the feet of Jesus. So what? She was kissing Jesus. She was close to Jesus. So, and so much story come out in modern time in the name of the Mary Magdalene. So there was something, some spark in those women. I, I want to share with you. And to feel respect for everybody, there is something great. And and I invite you to think like Jesus. Nobody can think like Jesus, but just one parable I give you. Imagine you have a wallet, or a pocketbook, or a purse. Uh, it, it gets lost somewhere. What will you do? You will go back to that place again and again to search for that. Imagine you are going to start your car and you find that your 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 key is in the home. Then you go back inside the home again and again and again and again so many times to find the key and uh, 20 times 30 times you will go inside there but now i ask you a question imagine if our mobile phone or the cell phone mobile phone we call it now this is smartphone it gets lost uh, we we have forgotten it somewhere like drinking coffee at the airport and then we are moving towards the plane and then we realize that our phone is, is left where we drink coffee then we run back there and we search for our phone so many times until we find it but now again a question comes for the little things of the senses of this world we can struggle like that but who among us is there that struggles for God that way this is the question. None of us crave for Lord in the same intense spirit with which we crave for the things of the senses of the world. But even many of us, most of us are living in a life is in a way such dull life, such monotonous life, such saturated life that we don't know how to search for anything. Like we don't... So Jesus... I invited you to think like Jesus. So Jesus was searching for such people who were not living dead. Because one time a person said that he wanted to, he, he's, he wanted to attend the funeral of his father. Then Jesus said that let dead bury their dead and you come and follow me. So according to Jesus Christ, living being were dead. Those people who were going to do the funerals, they were also dead. And the person who died was also dead. So according to Jesus, most of us are living dead because we are living just for our flesh. And uh, there is no passion, no search in our life. So because the circle of the vision has become so narrow, so degraded, so beastly, such animal. 
none is desiring anything beyond this body, this terrible degradation, this terrible misery of it. What the little flesh, the five senses, the stomach, what the world, but a combination of this stomach and sex. Look at the millions and billions of people around you, men or women, anybody. If you remove this two faculty from the life of many people, this hunger that um, imagine nobody feels hunger at all and nobody has anything to do with sexual attraction or men and women attraction or any kind of of of, of this sex energy attraction then what will happen the life will appear empty meaningless and intolerable to many of us because such is our mind we are hankering our ways and means to satisfy, to entertain us, and this is stomach, sex, and entertainment, spending time, all the time this is going on, and these things bring this momentary satisfaction, like take, taking messages or, messages or some entertainment video that makes us joyful, but later it brings suffering because it makes us hollow, it is like a cup of um, something that we we drink and uh, imagine there is something to drink above there is honey and below there is poison such is the life so w most of us are are living a life of dead because we are living with body without the soul and the spirit there so imagine jesus saw that everybody is living dead but among them jesus found few people who were also living dead but they where so those people whose smartphone got lost in the airport and there are few blessed people uh, who had their pocketbook, purse, wallet getting left over in the home and they ran back because they searched for it. So these are the few people among all the people who are alike, those few people who cried and uh, who searched for something Jesus found potential in them that they are the people who are going to search uh, they know the search because people have eyes but they are unable to see it that's why Jesus needed to say all the time believe 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 why because people could had eye but were unable to see it and uh, so imagine those uh, fishermen Peter and others, they were searching for the fish all night and unable to find anything at all. Then Jesus chose them. Jesus found, yeah, this is my man. This is also like other people, but he knows how to yearn for something, how to be to, to feel this longing, how to have this reason of searching. And Jesus chose Peter. First he helped him to find the fish there abundance of fish and then he said that I will make you the facer of man you will attract men people the same is the story of the woman there was a woman with five husbands about whom I told and she never worked with anybody and right now she is living with a man who has not husband so she knows the pain of heartbreak she knows the search for for she knows the thirst that is in her that how to find it so so is the story of other women who were living the life of the last and she knows this this emptiness she had seen this emptiness of sexual pleasure and she needed this see permanent pleasure they all say that god is the truth the only thing that really exists but who really feels it who really searched for god so Jesus found a spark in those women who wanted, who had faced so much of heartbreak that they are lustful, they need it. You know, if a girl get lustful about a man, or a man get lustful about girl, or however, then they want it, they search for it. If a thief, imagine a state of mind of a thief, thief wants to, to get anything, he has this relentlessness in, in him or her, so this is what Jesus found the spark. First, Jesus make people a good fisherman. And then he transferred from fisherman to fisher of man. The, the girl who was seeking for the flesh, Jesus just needed the seeking in that. Who seeks, finds, who knocks, door open. They were knocking for maybe the wrong thing, but Jesus just needed to 
exchange their side, but what is needed is the search and asking. And what you need to ask is the eternal spirit alone. El alone. El alone. Only. Okay, only. Not the changing matter. Yet the things we seek is really God. Is really the spirit. Even in God, what we want, we listen to so many testimony, Christian testimony, tes testimony, in which we find that how uh, some illness is uh, happened. So and so says this, such and such says that that something happened and they had fun, they got money, they got something, their broken leg was got healed. And we want to go to God for this kind of, of, of reason. We seek material things, we inquire for, for, for this thing that, uh, yeah, it is also good. Who, 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 if we are in pain, then it is good to call God, but, but who search for the Spirit? This is the question of the Jesus Christ. So, whenever we say anything that I want God, let us measure the, our words. And uh, they are the people who ask, ask God for all kinds of things. Name, fame, wealth, position, and so on. But uh, who, who search for God? So, let us worship the Spirit in a Spirit, standing on the Spirit, where the foundation is the Spirit, middle is the Spirit, and the aim is also a Spirit. Then we don't have to despair. The important thing is how much le less we think of our body, of ourself as ma matter, as dead, dull, and insentient matter, and how much more we think of ourselves as the signing immortal being the more we think of ourselves as the signing immortal eternal spirit the more eager we become to be absolutely free from this matter body senses illness or whatever aging and this intense desire to be free is salvation and uh, jesus brings this desire to be free in us and um, to end with, I want to tell you that imagine some someday you are like Jesus is on the cross and uh, hand and feet is bound. If our hand and feet gets bound that way, uh, somebody bind our hand and feet and then put some some hot water over our body or, or burning charcoal over our body. What will we do? We will try to break the thread and get out of it. So oh, we want to break this, this what is binding us. So why don't we feel this 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 passion in us? To be free from from the bondage, the limitation of our life, and Jesus is teaching us to to lift up our eyes and see beyond the situation. Everybody you read in the Scripture, in whom the grace becomes the glory, are those people who were not satisfied with their present state, who wanted to rise above their situation. Either it is any sensible woman, either it is. It is some fishermen, they were not satisfied with what they have. A woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years, she was not satisfied. And then they wanted to rise above, they wanted to free themselves from the bondage and then from them resurrect a new birth. And this birth is into the spirit and we born, reborn into the spirit of the Christ. And um, it happens by love. Thank you so much for listening to these words with so much of love there is a spark in search there is a spark in knock whoever knocks doors open for that person maybe our our knocking is on the wrong place we are seeking something something not good but what is important that we have eye to see we have this longing to search to find and who who wants to find finds and christ is here to change the direction like a child first place a child who, who never walks but a child start to walk and then we help the child to get the right direction but important thing is walk so people who want to change their situation their situation really gets changed for better and for that i pray for you and the love of the christ is always with you
So Merry Christmas. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. May God bless you.